is um, How to Talk by Postdocs. This is, I think, the seventh time we've offered this series, but this is the first of this particular session. And we're very happy to have Dr. Iqbal Boyan, who does um, cell culture and animal models of um, stroke research from the Dundun Sun Lab. Um, in neurology, and today he's going to be talking about how to assess preclinical stroke models. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my presentation. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Kerry for this opportunity for postdocs to have sharing our knowledge with our community, community. Today, I would like to talk about how to assess preclinical stroke models. My presentation includes some background of strokes, current therapeutic strategies, how to model and assess cerebral ischemia and stroke, and obviously how to choose appropriate model for study. Please feel free if you have any question to ask me. You know that human, sorry, human brain is only 2% of the body weight, but it takes 15% cardiac output and 20% of total body oxygen. Because neurons are always working, it needs continuous supply of energy. If few minutes of ischemia makes irreversible injury to the brain, mainly neurons will die. And stroke is an acute neurological injury in which the blood supply to a part of the brain or whole brain also can be interrupted. And Hippocrates, like around more than 2,000 years ago, first described this sudden paralysis that is often associated with stroke. There are mainly two kinds of um, stroke. One is ischemic stroke, when the blood vessel is blocked. And another is hemorrhagic stroke, when any blood vessel in the brain is ruptured and it causes the bleeding into the surrounding brain tissues. So one more thing that just adjacent to the blood or clot, there is this immediate cell death, which we call uh, core area, and there is surrounding area which the cells still survive, but eventually they will die if there is no inter intervention that we call penumbra region. That is the main target of research. Ischemic stroke is about 80% among total stroke and it can be thrombotic when blood clot within the cerebral arteries or branches or embolic when clot form outside the brain and travel to the brain and blocks. There is also one kind of um, that is called transient ischemic at a TIA which persists less than 24 hours which is also known as mini attack. Stroke is the third leading cause of death worldwide and the major cause of adult disability because around 76% stroke patients survive. And the risk factors for stroke is inactivity, age, family history, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, smoking obviously, and also burn, drinking. When stroke happen, immediately there is the uh, reduction of the energy and many detrimental um, cascades are starts like dysfunction of ionic homeostasis mechanism, excited toxicity, uh, oxidative stress, inflammation, and also apoptotic cell death. So far, for um, the treatment for acute stroke, there is two main approaches. One is reperfusion 
for this there is only one drug available so far which is called tissue plasminogen activator which is a thrombolytics but it has limited use because it has short win therapeutic window like within four to five hours we have to apply and also it has the chance for further hemorrhage so it cannot be given who has the hemorrhagic stroke only for the ischemic stroke and another potential approach is neuroprotection in which we can apply some drug which will prevent the cell death and mainly the neuronal cell death it will prevent or and there are many successful neuroprotective drugs only in animal models, but no one is still success in the clinical trial. So what is the problem? How to work on this one? So problem may be because one thing we do in our laboratory settings, we take the animals which are homogeneous, age is same, and mostly young age. But in case of human, it's not that key. It is heterogeneous population. Age is different and mostly for the aged people has this stroke. So that may be one reason. And also maybe other things is like comorbidity. We only use the normal rate. Sometimes also we take hypertensive or diabetic rate, but mostly we use the uh, normal rate or ma mouse. But in case of human, there is many other factors like hypertension, diabetes, many things can be comorbid. So that may be another reason. Or also, how to say that one, the age and heterogeneity, and most important in my thinking that there are many cascades happen when the ischemia or stroke, like several pathways. But in case of drug development, we mainly focus only one target or one pathway. So it may be the main factor. So how to overcome this? Uh, that means we have to study more. We have to dig out what is happening, what is the mechanism or mo another molecular target. So for that, we have to study. And we can study by modeling the stroke. So how to model the stroke? We can do by both way, like in vitro ischemia-like model or animal model of stroke. For in vitro ischemia, we can use many kinds of brain cells, mainly the neuronals that can be near pure neuronal or co-culture with the astrocyte or other cells like oligodenocyte precursor cells or only astrocyte culture. And also some people use some kind of um, cell lines which are um, immortal cells but when you use culture and give some growth factor or some differentiated factor, they can differentiate like neuron, neuron, neuron like, although not the same like the neuron. Here is an example of serum free near pure primary culture of cortical neurons from embryonic mice. So you can culture them like around four or five weeks. You can see that early stage there is not that much exodendritic network, but when it's around two weeks, you can see that how this same cells is developed by exon and dendritic processes. And you can check whether they are pure or like have some astrocyte contamination also. In this case, you can see only um, less than 5% contamination of the estrocyte. Yeah. <coughs> why are you taking cultures from embryonic, or why is the model embryonic? Okay, the main thing is that when the de um, cell differentiated, like around 14 to embryonic day, 14 to 16 days, the neuronal differentiation occur. So if we take later, like postnatal day one, two, they already differentiated. So we cannot isolate them perfectly, or we cannot cause their culture will not be that good also. That's why before differentiation, we take the neuronal progenitor cells, then culture, and then they differentiate in the culture like neuron. And then you can expose those cells like chemical ischemia 
using the respiratory chain inhibit inhibitor such as hydroacetate, sodium cyanide, or 3 nitropropionic acid. This is called chemical ischemia. And also, you can expose them like hypoxia or anoxia with or without glucose. Among them, the oxygen and glucose deprivation model this is the most popular one people normally use because it mimics both kind of thing. I'll show you. Just a when you culture those primary neurons like six to seven days, then you can wash them with hippies buffer, then give some hippies buffer like deoxygenated without oxygen, and then put into the anaerobic chamber where you can flush with nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and helium, there is no oxygen. So it mimics, like there is no oxygen, and there is no glucose in the media, so it mimics like when it happens in the ischemia, no blood supply, that means no oxygen and no glucose. So in a, energy will be reduced. So like this way, that there is no oxygen and there is no glucose, so we call it oxygen and glucose deprivation. And you can keep them like mainly for in vitro ischemia, like one to four hour with the primary cultural neuron is enough. And then you can again take them back in the normal culture with the normal media with glucose that mimic the like reoxygenation, right? Not refurbation, it's called reoxygenation. Like the both things happen. And you can see then after 24 hour or 48 hour, you can analyze them. What is the outcome? Like microscopic analysis, you can see two hour, three hour, and four hour OCD may use neuronal degeneration in the culture with the dye. And you can analyze biochemically like one. LDS lactate dehydrogenase assay, which is a cell death marker kind of. When there is injury, the LDS is released from the cell. So you can measure those in the media, and you can see that OGD time dependent cell death marker release. You can see two, three, and four hours. So it mimic like ischemia. And there's one example how we screen the drug with this model. You can see that anthocyanin is a, um, collected from like, you can get it from fruits like mulberry or also soybean seed corn. So this, we hypothesize that this is a good um, for, how to say, um, it will prevent the cell um, from dying with that. OGD. So you can see when you apply this um, potential drug, they, when there is no drug, the cell, a uh, fit person cell die. When we increase the concentration like 20 millimole, the cell survival rate increase. And also it decreases the cell date also, as you can see. So two kinds of biochemical analysis, this MTTS, this LDS assay. Also, you can check whether it reduces the what is the mechanism like is it reducing the reactive oxygen species as you can see when you apply the this drug it reduces the uh, ROS production and also it protect the mitochondrial membrane permeability so with this um, cell culture model you can do many kind of mechanical mechanistic study or also screening of the drug initial screening but the final testing of potential drug in clinical trial depends on mainly the animal studies result. Also, sometimes it is required by the law. You have to do the animal study, then you can go for clinical trial. So for that, we have to study the animal model. And also, animal models are good because it helps us understand how living tissues function because cell tissues and organ within a body is very complex. So if you study only single, like one um, segregated cell or organ, it's not that appropriate, like the whole body. And also, by understanding how disease or injuries affect living or organism, we can develop treatments or cures. Also, it's helpful for training the future scientists and physicians. 
So there are mainly two major kinds of cellular ischemia model, animal model, global and focal. Global also there is two kinds, like complete global ischemia, like when the cardiac arrest occurred, or aortic occlusion occurred, or when neck cuff, that one, or sometimes when people drown in the water also. And incomplete ischemia, when there is hemorrhagic stroke happen, that is incomplete. Or also, we can model by two vessel occlusion, like two carotid artery occlusion, or four vessel, two carotid artery and vertebral artery occlusion. And it can be permanent or transient. In case of focal ischemia, that can be multifocal using the emboli or thrombus. Also, mainly it can be focal ischemia like using the MCO, middle occlusion of the middle cerebral artery or MCO plus cardiac artery, photochemical, intraluminal filament. Also, it can be permanent or transient. For modeling the transient global foreign ischemia, we can do in the Jarville, mouse, spread, any, but mainly these two view, two vessel occlusion mainly are popular in Jarville and mouse. When you just occlude these two carotid arteries, it can mimic like, although incomplete, but global ischemia. And you can measure the outcome three to seven days later. But there is difference in the ischemia time. In the Jarville, one to three minutes is enough. But in the mice, you need more time, like 30 to 40 minutes, so huge difference. Because you see there is a circle of wheelies. In case of Jarville, the posterior communicating artery is absent in the Jarville, in case of Jarville. So there is no collateral flow or the flow from the basilar or vertebral artery. So very short time is enough for Jarville. But in case of bread, there is it's oil established, so only two view is not good in case of red. But in mice, mainly for the C57 BL6 mice, the PCOMA is variable. Like in some cases, it's absent in both, and some cases it's absent in the unilateral, but some cases it's present in both sides. So when you apply the laser Doppler flow metry and then occlude the two vessels in the mice, you can see that immediately that whether there is the blood reduced, so your model is good. And when the blood supply is around like more than 90% in case of two view, people say that the, if this model will be okay, this animal can be used as a uh, for ex further experiment. But when there is like 70% reduction, it's not that good, so you can discard that animal. And you can measure the outcome with different staining, like crazy violet staining, and even immunoreactivity and fluorosity staining. You can see one example that in the sham animal, in case of hippocampal C1 neuron, they are intact. Their cell body is normal, bigger and there is huge immunoreactivity of NUN, like the neuronal series, okay? But there is no cell death marker, fluorescent. But when there's 40 minute BCCO, and three days after, you can see that huge neurodegeneration, the cell, smaller cell body, necrotic cells, and absence of the NUN immunoreactivity, and you can see the DEP is very smaller, like they're like maybe, mm, Prototype or smaller nuclei, and mostly the fluorescent staining. You can see like this kind of staining, the neural cell type dead. So this one kind of neuron, neuron specific marker. Now I'll talk about the focal cerebral ischemia. Before that, I would like to show you that in the brain, the different arteries which supply the blood to different region of the brain. As you can see there, um, this is the middle cerebral artery, the major arteries, and also anterior cerebral artery, posterior cerebral arteries, and they supply in different regions. So which area 
is affecting by what kind of uh, blockage of the arteries. You can see that that this is the main the area which supplies by the middle cerebral artery. And in the human stroke cases, most of the stroke mainly occur in this region. Therefore, the scientists mainly focus blocking this artery. That's why the name also come MCAO, which is occlusion of the middle cerebral artery. And this is a rodent model, like mouse or red brain. You can see this is the area where the MCA is supplying the blood. And you can block this artery by different method, like putting the filament until the MCA origin, or also craniectomy and just coagulate the artery by distal MCA or proximal MCA, or also injecting some like thrombin or endothelin. So this way you can block this middle cerebral artery. So among them, this filament model, intraluminal suture method of MC is very popular because it is reproducible. You can take out the suture so it ca you can do the like reperfusion injury also you can see how and it can do in like mice, rat, any any of the like uh, animals. So it's that's why it's popular and it's first uh, developed by Kuizumi, a Japanese scientist in 1986 when he put this filament through the bifurcation of the CCA until the MCA origin. But in this case, the reperfusion is not that perfect. When you take out, you have to block this CCA, otherwise there will be bleeding, huge bleeding. So the reperfusion is not occurring through the CCA, it can be maybe other collateral flow. So later on, 1989, Longa developed, mm, modified the method and he put the filament to the ECA. And when you take it out, you can permanently block the ECA, not the CCA. So the reperfusion can occur through the CCA, which is perfect. And previously used, people use the filament, like custom made in the laboratory, just uh, heating the filament so it makes some uh, mm, round shape so it blocks the blood and also some people use using some hardening materials so putting the filament so you can have more diameter but nowadays this filament is commercially available by the Turkey corporation and also these are homogeneous the diameter is good and whatever the diameter you want they will make for you because it depends on the animal size, animal age, so the arteries will be, the diameter will be varies. So you can use this one. And now I'll just briefly describe how we do the MCA procedure, not the all the steps I'll take, just how. So before the MCA procedure, you have to prepare the animal for measuring the cerebral blood flow by laser doctor or by pericam. There is new method by just taking picture by pericam. So when you mm, prepare the mice, just open the, cut the skin, open the skull, not the open skull, just open the skin and just cleaning little bit. And you can take the initial measurement with the laser doctor or pericam. And later on, after the occlusion, you can again take the picture or the, you can take the reading again. So here is an, um, mainly, and um, this is um, open to online, so anyone, if you want, you can watch the whole procedure, how to do the answers in detail. So you, <coughs> if you want, you can go this uh, link. And I'll just briefly tell how to we do the this uh, surgical procedure, just shaving the neck, and then use the betadine and alcohol cleaning. Then just around 2.5 centimeter uh, cut in the neck, and then that's it in the 
fascia and there is glandular tissues. So you have to carefully just take them inside. Then you see a triangular shape um, arrangement here. And you see the um, circuit. Under this area, you will find the CCA, normally in case of red. But in case of mice, you can easily see that uh, the tissue is not that thick. So you can find easily the CCA. And then you can carefully dissect the ICA and ECA, external cavity artery, internal cavity artery. But you have to be careful for the vagus nerve, which along with the CCA and the ICA. If you desert or there's damage in the vagus nerve, it will be a huge problem for the mortality. So when you dissect the ECA, ICA, and the CCA, you can temporarily tie them with the CHO or using the microfilm. And then you permanently tie the ECA, digital ECA, and make a small hole by cutting it and put the filament. And then just temporarily tie, make a temporary tie here and cut completely here, this one. So, and then you can mobilize the ECA, it will be back, so it will be straightened. And then... So you, that's how you get around that extreme angle. Yes, yes, the, it, yeah, after cutting, it, you can mobilize right. that one. Right. Then you can insert the filament until the MCA origin. So we do one thing that that we have, we make mark in the CH that is around 18 millimeter in case of bread. So when this mark will go and after the bifurcation, you will say that they are going the perfect position. Also, you will feel some resistance when it comes here because it is narrowing down the interior cylinder. So you will feel the resistance also. In case of mice, it will be 8 millimeter. No. How much time does this all take? It depends on the surgeon. Like for me, it takes 30 minutes at least. But here is some other surgeon who is taking 20 minutes. And because we do through the ECA, it's a little bit tricky. So if we do just normal previous method, that Koizumu, the simple one, that will take very less time, like 10 to 15 minutes to do that. And you can close the wound and make egg the rat or mice and keep them for a certain period. Like in case of rat, we keep them one hour, at least one hour to two hour. Like in case of sprague delivery, two hour. For spontaneous hypertensive rate, one hour is enough. In case of mice, one hour is more than enough. And after one hour or two hour, you can again take, the, take back the filament and just make a permanent tie in the ECA and close the wound and you can keep the enemy and see their behavior also. Uh, so how you, how you will check whether your model is perfect or not, it's working or not? You can do by two way, measuring the blood flow in the um, central blood flow by laser to perfometry. You can see like this kind of reduction when you just immediately after the occlusion or also by taking picture with the pericam. As you can see here is one example. This is the normal baseline before we take um, ischemia, we take the um, image by the pericam. And when there is ischemia, MCO occur, you can see in this region there is no blood if you compare the previous things. So by this way also you can check whether your model is working or not. So immediately after MCO, you can see, you can check whether it's okay or not. You can keep the animal or you will discard the animal. And also, you can measure the neurological behavior after ischemia or stroke, you know. The one side is when the, like, if we do the left side MCO, the right side will be paralyzed. So you can see different, uh, like, neurological behavior when you suspend by tail it will circle or also sometimes it spontaneously also circle because it has a stroke. 
and there are different kinds of method. This is the eight nine point method. Also, there is some four point five point method. Also, you can check those. Two. And how you will evaluate the outcome of the NCO stroke model? You can do by like TTC staining, crystal violet staining, or also immune staining with the NUN or the MAP2. The most common and popular one, the very simple one, the TTC staining, the one kind of um, salt which is um, clear in when in solution it's clear. When you put in the with the ischemic tissue, the tissue which is viable, it has some mitochondria viable and it has mitochondrial enzyme dehydrogenase. It will convert the TTC salt to a color solution, a color product. So, which cells are live, they will make, they will be eventually will be red color. And where there is dead cell, they cannot do anything with the salt. So it will be re, it will remain the like same like white. So you can do by this way. And then you can measure the how much infraction or the soiling occurred by this simple equation with the help of image analyzer, like image software, which is uh, free. And this is an example how we report this when we use this model. Like we show we showed that uh, regional cerebral blood flow is getting down when we do the MCA, MCO, and it remains during the occlusion and when with the repercussion, that it came back again the normal. And we report how the, the staining is look like in different, like this is one kind of drug we treated. And when we apply the drug, the um, infarction is less. And also we can shown by uh, quantitative analysis for the infarction volume, soiling volume, it's a kind of edema uh, measurement. And also we show what is the neurological score after ischemia or one day or two day like that. And important thing you have to consider that during the surgical procedure, the body temperature should, man should be maintained 36 to 37 because ischemia often occur the hypothermia. So, but hypothermia is also known as neuroprotective, so the outcome will be variable. Also, you have to be sure that the filament is not going the another branch of the um, ICA. There is one branch. This is called pterygopalatin artery. If it goes to this artery, ischemia will not happen. It should come to the origin of the middle cerebral artery. And this one you can easily uh, confirm by the microscope. When you do under the microscope, you can easily just have to dig out more and you can easily confirm it goes to this artery or the original data MCA. And filament should go around 18 millimeter for the red in case of red or at least 8 millimeter in case of mouse. And do not push the filament more, otherwise it will make hemorrhage, rupture of the vessel. And what factors affecting this MCO model? There are many things you have to consider. Like the, what is the diameter of the filament it will affect? What is the age and weight of the animal? In case of young animal, there will be less infraction. In case of aged animal, there will be more infraction. And six, there is male and female. In case of female, there are hormonal imbalance with time. So it also shows that it makes near protection. Time and kinds of occlusion. What kind of occlusion is it? Temporary or permanent? And what is the time? One hour, 90 minutes or two hour? And what kind of anesthesia? Some anesthetic, as in like isoforin, also cause the neuroprotection. And obviously the strain of mice and rat. As you can see that the Wister K2, normal tensive Wister K2 rat is more resistant to ischemia. Whereas spontaneously hypertensive rat is more susceptible to ischemia as compared to the infraction volume of use. 
and finally how to choose which model you would like to use for your study so that also has many things you have to consider what is your target area what area you would like to you would like to study the hippocampal function hippocampal hippocampus or in the cortical area if hippocampus you you would go to for four view or two view model if it is cortical you can go for mco transient mco with short time like something and what kind of function like in case of four view or two view you can study the special memory impairment but in case of like mco model you you will get the sensory motor impairment and what kind of drug you will study like if you want to study the thrombolytics you have to choose the model inducing by the thrombus or blood clot not the filament one and what kind of ischemia like you want to study the global ischemia when the cardiac arrest occur you have to go for global like 4 view or 2 view not the mca but when you want to study the human like normal stroke you have to most popular is the mco the filament model you can go so i would like to thank my present boss dr tendon san and also my previous two mentor from korea dr kim and dr jin and also one lady from whom i learned this technique chan and also my present and previous members and obviously the funding organization for their general said thank you for your kind att attention to this talk if you have any question you can feel free